The Linus controversy takes some controversial turns. Xbox has an eight strike policy. And Arrow Lake gonna give you so much cash, you're gonna be able to game like a baller. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday. July, August 16th, 2023. Sorry, got the month wrong. I even looked at my watch, it told me everything. I messed it up, my bad. Which is kind of what people were hoping Linus would say with regards to the response to the Gamers Nexus controversy that was brought up about Linus's accuracy, ethics, and responsibility problems. And instead, it turns out that there were things that Linus put in his message that turned out, at least after Gamers Nexus posted some details and Bill at Labs posted some details, to be false, or at least to be presented in a way where they were construed by the community to be in Linus's favor, when in reality, that is not the situation it, that was at hand. So we are recording this video before any video may have come out from Linus Tech Tips. They haven't released any video today as of the time of recording. It's not clear if there is gonna be a response from Linus. If there is, we'll have to include it in a follow-up video right here here on Hot News. But Steve over at Gamers Nexus taking exception with Linus's response in several different ways. We have that full hardware news video linked in the video description for you to check out. But I think the key concern of the community has been the treatment of Billet Labs and the auctioning off of the prototype and the fact that there has just been tons of miscommunication. One of the things that Linus said in his response that if Steve had contacted Linus, he would know that, that while they haven't sent payment yet, they have already agreed to compensate Billet Labs for the cost of the prototype. And that turns out to be patently against what Billet Labs is saying publicly. With Billet Labs saying to Gamers Nexus that they did not get a response from Linus on the reimbursement until after the Gamers Nexus video had been published, in which case that decimates Linus's argument that Steve would know that they were going to do that. And after the hardware news video, Billet Labs posted their own order of events on how things transpired that helped to give us a little bit more insight into to how things went down. So they have their public statement regarding LTT over on LTT subreddit saying, you the PC community are amazing. We'd like to thank you for your support. It means more than you can imagine. Steve at Gamers Nexus has publicly shown his integrity at the huge risk of backlash. And we have nothing but respect for him and for how he's handled himself, both publicly and when speaking to us directly. Regarding LTT, we're simply going to state the relevant facts. On the 10th of August, we were told by LTT via email that the block had been sold at auction. There was no apology. This is taken taking place a week and a half after the auction had actually gone on, but there was some previous communication listed by Gamers Nexus that was not in the LTT post by Billet Labs, with them having communications from Linus's team with Linus Media Group telling Billet Labs on June 30th, let us know if you'd like the block back either way, and we can ship it back with the 3090 Ti. On July 6th, they said they'll send back the monoblock and the 3090 Ti. On the 12th, they said that the block and the 3090 Ti should be sent sometime next week. And then in early Early August, they said, so there was a communication mishap and we ended up auctioning off the monoblock in a silent auction for charity at LTX. The good news is, is that it isn't just sitting on a shelf. Getting back to the Reddit post, they continue on saying, we replied on the 10th of August within 30 minutes telling LTT that this wasn't okay and that this was a four figure prototype. And we asked if they plan to reimburse us at all. We received no reply and no offer of payment until two hours after the Gamers Nexus video went live on the 14th of August, at which point Linus himself emailed us directly, again, contradicting Linus's own statement that Steve would have known that they were had agreed to compensate Billet Labs because according to Billet Labs timeline, they had not been contacted by Linus directly until after the video. Continuing on saying the exact monetary value of the prototype was offered as a reimbursement. We have not received nor have we asked for any other form of compensation. Continuing on about the future of Billet Labs because it's one of the things that a lot of people were concerned with. What does Linus's treatment of them have to do with the company? Did he doom them? What's going on there? Saying that we don't plan to mourn our missing block. We're already hard at work making another one to use for PC case development, as well as other media and marketing opportunities. Yes, it sucks that the prototype has gone. It slowed us, but has absolutely not stopped us. We have pre-orders for it and plan to push ahead with our first production run as soon as we can. We also have some exciting new products on our website that are available to buy now. We thank everyone who has bought them so far. We can't wait to see what you do with them. We're happy to answer any questions, but we won't be commenting on the LTT or the specifics of the email exchanges. We're going to concentrate on making cool stuff and innovative products. The monoblock just being one of these with Felix and Dean from Bill Labs piecing out, saying, 
something that they hope LTT implements the necessary changes to stop a situation like this from happening again. So it does seem like Billet Labs considers the matter resolved. They don't really want anything more from Linus. We have a link to their website down below in the video description for you to go check them out. They have some really cool copper tubing as well as the monoblock, which you can purchase for over 800 US dollars. But when we thought nothing else was going on, turns out that there was another update to come uh -oh. out from Billet Labs with them saying for full transparency, Linus contacted us this evening. They're in the UK, so it's a little later for them, saying that it's likely he can get the block back from the buyer. We have declined this offer and asked for the previously agreed monetary value instead for the following reasons, a lot of them having to do with how bad Linus messed up this entire operation. Saying number one, they've already spent a significant percentage of the value of the block in the last few days on replacement parts to build a new block, assuming they'd never seen the original one again. Number two, they don't know if the original block is still a good working condition and how much money we'll need to fix it. Number three, they don't know if any of the bespoke fittings are missing, which each of them cost money to replace. Number four, LTT have had our 3090 Ti without using it for nine weeks, so we have lost confidence that they will return items quickly. Number five, LTT isn't currently in possession of block. They have only said that they can get it back. We therefore don't know when we'd get it back and time is of the essence. Number six, LTT has confirmed that the block is with a private individual rather than a rival company, so lost IP is much less of an issue. Continuing on, they, they want to state this publicly just in case anyone has any issues with the fact that the block has been potentially found and we chose to take the money instead. We hope you understand our reasoning here. We can have our new block that we're currently making ready in the next couple of weeks, and we are skeptical that we would have had the original block back in fully working condition in that amount of time. It would be a gamble at the very least. So it does seem props to Billet Labs for how they're handling the situation. Just firm, direct PR communication with a hint of marketing. Yeah. Very good to promote their company. Obviously, they lost big here, so them reaping some rewards here is, I think, due. It's valid. Absolutely. But one of the emails that I received yesterday as a winner of one of the charity auctions seems to indicate how this resolution came about. So we received an LTX auction winners email directly from somebody at Linus Media Group yesterday with them saying, can you please let me know the item you won during the LTX auction? We've mistakenly lost that sheet and need it for our tax purposes. Thank you. So it does appear like they had to do a little bit of digging to find out who actually won it, especially because the actual Extra Life charity booth was not manned by any LTT staff as far as I could see, and it was by Extra Life volunteers. So it is a very strange situation that's playing out, but obviously the biggest problem being that Linus communicating some very bad statements about how Steve would have known that this was resolved when, according to Billet Labs, this was not resolved at all in the time frame that Linus is suggesting it's happening in. This is not shaking out in a way that looks like Linus has addressed this publicly in a way that satisfies the community. It does look like Billet Labs is happy with the resolution. I'm sure they'll be even happier if you buy some of their stuff using the link in the video description, hashtag not sponsored, but obviously check them out. But I also just to make this a little bit more response oriented. There were a couple of comments, a lot of comments in yesterday's video about remarks that I made in the coverage yesterday with regards to me thinking that because it was for a charity auction that made it okay. And must be of the way that I communicated was wrong because that was not what I said. And I thought that I had communicated clearly from the premise that this is really screwed up. Profiting personally is worse than giving it to charity. That doesn't make the situation good at all. However, I can guarantee that the community response would be even more aggressive if they thought that Linus had sold it for his own personal gain. It creates a different level of intensity if Linus pocketed the cash for the monoblock prototype. All of it's wrong, and I communicated that yesterday, or at least I thought I did, but allegedly not clearly enough. I think a lot of the issues that Steve brought up in his initial video have been things that Linus himself has already addressed, which is one of the reasons I think why Linus spent so much of his initial blog post not talking about those things at all, because he has talked about at length on The Wan Show about the lack of quality, the mistakes they're making, even the Ponage mouse situation. He has been addressing the fact that these are things that need to be fixed, that he is working on. And I think Linus has shown time and time again to the community that he will meet these challenges head on publicly by addressing them with a platitude of we are going to get better. But this response on the LTT forum was not it. And 
we'll have to see if there's any more details coming out further. Any comments you want to add, Reese? Oh, no, I'm... I'm staying out of this. People actually were upset with you for staying out of it. They were like, ULTT shills, how dare you not even have Reese comment on it? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you want to throw something out to the audience? Situation bad. Things bad. Riveting. <laughs> All right, a little addendum here at the end because Linus just released a video at 6 a.m. my time about what they're going to be doing now. They're going to be stopping video production for the foreseeable future as they review their processes. Basically, every member of the LMG executive staff is in this video. You can go watch it to see how they discuss their paths and policies moving forward. With regards to the bad truth on what was going on with the billet lab situation, Colton explains in his portion that they accidentally didn't send that email that Linus thought that they had sent. So uh, it still looks like billet labs is correct on their interpretation of it. And Linus did communicate something that did not happen and made it seem like Steve was in the wrong from a completely emotional response as Linus admits to in his video. It does seem like the community response to this has led to essentially LMG locking down and changing their entire practices. With the top comment being, dang, we're going from not talking about it on WAN to a full blown video with literally every person on the executive team, including the brand new CEO, Darren Tong. Let me know what you think of Linus's response video down below in the comments. I think until new things happen or if they do, we're gonna again be done talking about it, but Linus and team are not gonna produce videos for a little while so that they can work out the pace at which they're working and how to figure out all the labs issues. Well. It's time for today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. You might remember that the UFD Tech team recently just drove all the way across America and back for LTX 2023. And in that time, we covered over 8,000 miles of road and saw some incredible sights. But we also saw some bad driving practices as well. I'm always mildly worried on our drive streams about getting into an accident. But thankfully, I know the one thing I wouldn't be daunted by is the process of getting an injury claim submitted. And while thankfully, I didn't have to use them from our drive stream with Morgan & Morgan, submitting an injury claim is so easy. Morgan & Morgan has modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor's bills all from your phone. You can even text with your attorney and case manager without ever having to go into an office. And when you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things you should do. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they're injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from yourself. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. All right, we've got another blistering round of fast hot news to get through, especially because this LTT saga continues to pile up and take up a lot of time in order for me to at least explain it properly. I that's what I think. Anyways, Dell, also in a lot of hot water, at least in Australia. Arnar. Oh, Arnar. $6.5 million fine for exaggerating web store monitor bundles where they had a whole bunch of monitor discounts that they made way too convoluted and crazy. Now they have to pay back that money, $6.5 million. 5,300 add-on monitors were sold between the promotion period with Australia coming in and saying, hey, that's not a good idea. Xbox saying, hey, if you've got some bad ideas on how you want to communicate on Xbox social, we'll give you eight strikes, not three strikes you're out. This isn't baseball. This is Xbox ball, X ball, X box all. X, the X is the strike. So the strikes will be dependent on the severity of your infraction. Each infraction could count for more than one strike, but it's also a rolling period that it applies across. And it's also a scaling level to what your strikes do. If you have one strike, nothing really happens. Two strikes, you're suspended for a day. Four strikes, you're suspended for a week. Eight strikes, and you're locked out of multiplayer for one full year. But strikes will remain on for six months. So if you get two at the beginning and then they roll off after six months, then you're at zero strikes again. Is this a big deal? How how many times are people getting striked on Xbox? I don't know. Cod bros are shivering right now. Is that really what this is? I've I've, Feels like it. I've never gotten banned from any online platform, probably because I'm really bad at multiplayer games. But you know what I'm not bad at? UFD deals transitions. And with that, deals. First up, we have the Logitech G502 X Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse. I'm the biggest fan of Logitech Mouse. I are you a fanboy? You got some bias? I am a fanboy. I have so much bias towards Logitech mice, but you can pick this one up for only $79.99, making it $60 off. 
Wow. And then next up, we have the Cooler Master NR200 Small Form Factor Mini IPTX case. This is a small boy. The white version is currently on promo for $64.99 with the included promo code, making it $50 off. And then lastly, we have the Gigabyte M27Q Pro. This 27 inch 1440p 165 hertz gaming monitor is going for only $279.99, making it $50 off. And with that, the deals are done. I'm gonna hand you off back to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep rounding this up. Tesla's launching cheaper Model S and Model Xs, but they're doing it because they're software locking out the battery on range. So they're making the exact Ooh. same vehicle and then just forcing it so that you can't actually get what you're buying out of the gosh dang vehicle. Jailbreak. It, it, yeah, actually that's gonna be a problem. But additionally, one of the things that Electrek tried to press Tesla on was, hey, are you gonna sell this as an upgrade later on to like charge people for so that you force them to unlock it? And Tesla was like, maybe, we'll see how it goes. So you only get 320 miles out of the standard range Model S if you wanna spend a ton of money. And if you wanna drop 90 grand on the Model X, you get 269 miles, which man, if you're spending 90 grand, why not just spend a hundred grand? I don't know. Yeah, I at that know, point. Where do you where do you call the line? I, I don't know. I don't have that amount of money. I don't know what to do with it. And Google doesn't know what to do with themselves. It's a bad transition. They're going to be rolling out AI into summarizing web pages, just kind of like Microsoft's Copilot on their side of things. Google's generative AI powered search experience is supposed to help you find out the details of whatever article you're looking at. So if you want a recipe, you don't have to go through somebody's entire life story to just get the baking goods. And oh, Reese, this is a story for you, my friend. This is the weirdest television you've seen, and I know I'm you've in. seen some freaky ones, all right? So this is a 27 inch Stand By Me Go, all right? Can last for three hours on a single charge. So it's portable. Load shedding proof. Has four built-in speakers. Has all of the remote stuff you want. Look at that bad boy. It comes in a freaking suitcase, my guy. Look at that. That was South so fast. South Africans are salivating and right it, now. And it rotates, it does a whole bunch of stuff. Look, they have it as a little record player. You can play chess, chess, touch screens, all of that. Really incredible. So it does look like it can support all of the things that a regular TV does. Reese, I just need you to do one thing for me, my guy. What is that? Guess the price. You said South Africans are salivating, man. We're not eating good right now, are you're, we? You're not eating good, I'm sorry. Uh, 1,000 for 27 inches, my guy. But it's got 20 watt speakers, so. That doesn't make it that much better. This is like 20,000 Rand. Yeah, that hurts That's me. like an- My oh. TV was this much. It's, yeah, you, and you got an OLED one. Yeah. Goodness. And you you can only pre-order it over on LG's website right now if you want to. It's neat. It's expensive. LG, send this to me and I can show it the world there in South Africa. Oh, we are YouTubers. We can do things with it. Oh, that'd be cool. And you can do a lot of things with your CPU in case you're trying to game because there's reports coming out on Arrow Lake, which is going to be the 15th gen CPUs we're expecting from Intel, to have some massive upgrades, specifically in the L2 cache department with details coming out that Arrow Lake will have three megabytes of cache on L2 per core, which means, especially if you have eight P cores mm -hmm. and you got like 16, 24 E cores, you're getting a heck ton of cash. We're looking at up to 56 megabytes of L2 cash and 64 megabytes of L3 cash. What the frick is going on? Currently the 7950X 3D only has 16 megabytes of L2 cash. It does have a significant amount more of L3, but having that higher cash count at a lower level or higher level rather, would make it so that your games could potentially run faster and this might be the gaming cache that AMD wanted to do. So it's it's not clear when we're gonna get this. We're getting 14th gen allegedly in October based on the rumors, 15th gen likely to be a year from that, but it does seem like Intel does have a lot of little things behind the scenes that they're trying to implement and it looks like it's gonna be a good competition against Zen 5 when and if that happens. I'm excited for you. Were you, Reese, you excited to be done with this episode of Hot News? Oh yeah. It was a long one. It was, it was, it was an episode. I, as long as there's no major updates, I really don't foresee us covering this Linus Gamers Nexus thing anymore. This should be the last one. Unless it all implodes and then suddenly there's a fire and uh, things happen. And... Turns out that Jay's two cents was Gamers Nexus all along. Yeah. We'll talk about that if that happens. See you in the next Hot News.